So you want to be, you know, you want to be tracking uh, your losses so that you might be able to get some benefit from them, but you're probably only going to get a benefit from them if you're itemizing because, because the gambling losses themselves aren't usually going to kick, kick you over. So remember the general idea of a loss from a natural loss for an income tax perspective would be if it was something to help you generate revenue, it would be a legitimate loss for income taxes, which you could see on the Schedule C, for example, where which is basically an income statement with income and then expenses. These expenses are the most natural kind of thing that you would expect from an income tax system to be able to deduct because it's fair to tax people on the net income, not the gross income. But when you look at most people that have W-2 income, the thought process is that the 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 uh, employer is taking care of the expenses and therefore all the deductions that we usually look at, these Schedule A deductions are actually kind of incentives oftentimes that aren't like natural deductions that you would expect in an income tax type of system. Now with gambling losses, you might say, hey, look, I'm trying to earn money through gambling. I should be able to deduct the expenses, which kind of makes sense, but it's not really an, something that the government wants to incentivize and it's not like a, an act that you're doing for profit uh, generally over here. It's kind of more like a hobby or a specific area. So therefore, you don't typically get the deduction over here, but you might be able to get the deduction on the Schedule A, which is of course much worse because you'd have to be clearing the itemized deductions before you can take that. Uh, other times you might be dealing with people that just basically went to Vegas and they happened to win something and they got a W2G or something like that. Uh, in that case, same same kind of thing applies. Uh, you, you only get the you only get the losses up to the winnings and it's a Schedule A type of thing. So the situation would be as we saw before, they would probably have a W2G of income that's on Schedule One. That we'd have to say, okay, now they had gambling winnings, W2G. I'm just gonna say, okay, W2G winnings, let's say 5,000 or whatever. They didn't withhold anything, let's say. And now we've got that included in income. And the question is, well, they're gonna say, yeah, but I spent a lot more than that much, maybe they might say on, on gambling. <laughs> it, maybe not 5,000, I don't know how much they spend on gambling, but depends on what you're doing. So I've watched the movie Rounders and they they that's nothing man they the swings are huge in the, on the poker table but in any case then if I go to the schedule A we can have the losses over here if I jump to that won't let me jump to let's go over here and just go deductions for schedule A miscellaneous itemized deductions and there we have them, the gambling losses. So gambling losses, actually that's an override right here. It goes in the same area as the gains. So I can put them in here, the gambling losses. So there they are. All right, let's say they, let's say I lost like uh, 8,000. I spent 8,000 to win 5,000. Well then if I pull that on over to the schedule A, it's going to cap it gambling losses to the extent of the winnings notice it writes it in here because there wasn't like a, a, a just like a category for it writes it in here 5,000 but that 5,000 isn't enough to clear the 12,000 uh, itemized deduction threshold so if I go back on over then it's not being uh, pulled over here obviously if the losses were less than the winnings then it would take like 4,000 it would take the 4,000 up to capped at the number of the winnings. So if I go back down, there's the 4,000. So clearly the thing that would push people over to being able to itemize are the interest on the home. So if they own a home, then their gambling habit, maybe they can support their gambling habit more because they can take <laughs> the deductions. So we're going to say then we've got, let's say there was 12,000 here and then the taxes, we've got real estate, 3000. And so then if they're already itemizing, then it's going to become more relevant to to pick up those gambling losses if they had gambling winnings, they can pull into the first page of the 10 the 1040. And so the general idea is if you're dealing with someone that gambles a lot, then you might want to tell them uh, that yeah, you should be tracking your losses 
especially if you're itemizing so that you can take the losses. And if you gamble a whole lot, then maybe the losses will be sufficient enough to kind of push you over to itemizing. But usually they're not because they would have to clear the 12,950 or the 25,009. So if they don't own a home, they not, might not be able to do that. If there's someone that doesn't gamble a lot, but they're just going to Vegas and they're going to go gamble, then maybe, you know, you want to, you want to say, well, might, might be worth holding on to your losses, receipts of your losses or something like that. In the event that you happen to get just one windfall win for whatever reason, so that you might have the information to support the losses because remember that if you get audited for the deduction of the losses they, they're going to want to know the evidence of the losses so then the question is is it worthwhile for you to track the evidence of the losses if you're going to vegas or something or if you're you know doing some kind of gambling where you might be able to deduct the losses if you happen to actually win something and it kind of depends on how much you might win and whether or not you'll be able to deduct the losses and whether or not you are itemizing if I put that over here on, on our worksheet over here, by the way, we had gambling winnings before, I thought. Did we have gambling winnings before on other income? <clears throat> Maybe not. So let's just add schedule one gambling winnings. Is that how you spell gambling? I'm going to gamble that that is correct. It is correct. I win. I didn't put any money down. Dang it. I'm not that good at gambling anymore. Anyway, so let's say, what did I say it was? Uh, we won 5,000. And then we'll say that this is boom. And let's put some borders around this. Gambling winnings. That would pull over to the 1040. And then the losses would be part of the itemized deductions. So if I went into the schedule A in our worksheet and we said... Let's say we had gambling, it's, it's casualty, other, other items. Let's just add it here. I'm going to add some space. Give me some room, man. Cry crowding me. You're crowding me over here. All right. So we're going to say this is going to be gambling losses. And, and then let's say that was 4,000. We said 4,000 total gain total other itemized deductions summing that up on this side boom shakalaka and then is the spelling okay medical medical change it change it okay i wasn't even checking that part but whatever so that only adds up to 4,000 right now. So it doesn't pull over. So now it's not over. So we would be taking the lesser of still the standard. But if I had my other uh, ones here, the mortgage interest, which I said was 12,000, real estate taxes, which I think I said, what, 3,000? And then the state taxes are going to be calculated. I'll let the software do that uh, for me. 1,017, 1,017, 1017. That brings us up to the 20,017. Scrolling down, 20,017. Pulling over to the page one of the 1040, 100,000 minus the, or plus the income 105 minus the 20,017 gives us the 84,983. So let's see if that matches up. 105 minus the greater of 12,950 or 20,017 gives us the 84,983. So there it is. So there's just an example. I won't get into the second half of the tax calculation at this point because we're really kind of focusing in on that first half of the formula. We'll get into that second half in future sections, which will be great.